wanted to make a video about this before the storm knocks my power out and um, I simultaneously burn out the last MOSFETs I have. Uh, this circuit right here is a um, solid state Tesla coil circuit made by Tifatronics um, and it's a mod of a SCORI circuit. You can find his website there. It's Tifatronics website. But this is one of the coolest solid state Tesla coil circuits I've seen out there. It's not the most powerful but at roughly 12 to 24 volts depending on the variation out there these people are getting insane arcs from very small coils um, and while the mechanics behind how that's actually working is sort of complicated looking at uh, Tifa Tronics the simplified circuit here you can see really what's going on he's got an interrupter here regulator to power that and then he's got the MOSFET stage so if you subtract all this over here and just look at how it's switching um, it's pretty sweet how it works he's got a two turn with a center tap so basically what happens is you've got your uh, center tap it's your battery plus and then each other end of the primary is going to the drain of these drive fits here and those are being switched from this gate drive transformer which as you can see is being fed directly from the secondary the bottom of the secondary it's going straight to a gate drive, a gate drive transformer which the other end is ground and you've got these outputs here so the oscillating current from that secondary is what's switching these FETs high and low um, and what's cool to me about that is is if you look at the results that these guys are getting it looks pretty insane and what most of the other setups need to do to get something close to that is use uh, gate drivers <coughs> which is what I would have assumed he's got this resistor here this pot which is pulling the gates down um, one will start conducting for the other that gets the oscillation going but part of the key there is to get it get the uh, transistor just barely turning on so that's uh, the MOSFET just barely turning on it's sort of similar to if you're using a single FET to uh, use a potentiometer across your uh, gate and your drain or likewise that's sort of like your uh, base collector resistor or, or base B plus resistor on a uh, Slayer exciter circuit. But then, of course, here you've got your uh, primary capacitors, which are what's providing the, the oomph. I figured, how could I try to reconstruct this just on its own to see how that works as an oscillator? So, before I blew the rest of the fits I had, first I tried it on this guy because he already had a uh, center tap and worked out pretty good um, IRFP 260 ends ended up popping those um, I was rushing through it too much <clears throat> and the last ones I have at the moment right now and the gate charge on them they were a little more sensitive than the IRFP 260s um, so I figured I would try them out and I'm using this this bifiler choke here as my gate drive transformer whereas before I started off using this guy just I grabbed a random yellow toroid gave it about you know five wraps by filer just to see how it would switch and it actually would I don't have no idea what the switching signal was looking like but provided I added the right size value capacitor across that secondary it actually was switching that was that was recommended by Tifatronics but I noticed when I went over to this one, I didn't need a capacitor. Um, I've got a few pretty good variable caps that I've, I've tried, you know, from a fairly good range of low capacitance to see if that would make any difference, and it really didn't. So, no capacitors on here. This circuit, the way it's set up now, is basically bare bones, like in the schematic. Um, I've got a you know different primary. More or less, everything's a little different. This is a 10k pot instead of his 1k pot um, 
in this schematic he's referencing this the, some, the gates to uh, 5 volt plus off the regulator here I don't have a regulator it's, it's going to be whatever I'm feeding the uh, supply rail um, so I'm just going through a 1k on this end to B plus and then the other ends of it are as per the schematic um, but I've got that tuned to just barely turning on within a certain voltage range let me put it that way and the beauty of the uh, CVS supply is that at the at the lowest duty cycles you know it is ramping up the voltage very slowly but at the lowest duty cycles with an inductive load like this it's going to pop that supply cap I've just thrown a couple more on there just for you know just for shits but it'll pop the supply cap and recharge it and you see a little bit of you know interrupter effect there as far as Tesla coils go at low power level so like I say before I killed these I just kinda wanted to show a little bit of the uh, discharge which I find very impressive um, for, for what it is you know didn't spend any time tuning anything I just grabbed this this uh, number 12 copper twisted it around and see what it would do so you see I'm bringing it I'm bringing it up just barely Probably going to uh, cut the lights off just to get a better view of the discharges. But yeah, I wanted to—I don't want to crank it all the way and kill it. I just want to record a little bit of the discharges. So, one thing to pay attention to here is, I don't know, it, it it looks way more impressive to me in person, but th those are probably some of the best discharges I've ever got from this from this amount of power, which um, on a meter, it'd be hard to, to meter the, the uh, DC I was putting in there, but it's very, very small amount. <laughs> the thing is, it's due to this supply and the fact that it's modulated, pulse width modulated, so if I bring the supply up to a certain point, um, as with most coils I put on here, it's going to be a steady, continuous um, discharge. You know, it's just going to be steady plasma. With this circuit, the way it's set up, it's not going to do that. And when I bring it past a certain point, it's going to stop discharging, and it's going to give out a field, but it's not going to give me these pops. And I'll, you know, the fluorescent will stay lit, but until I back the the tensiometer back down to just barely conducting um, it's it's not going to work like it's supposed to so you sort of kind of see that once I put a regular supply to it to feed it power through an interrupter then I can pretty much recreate that effect with the uh, primary capacitors so that's what's going to happen and if they're low, ES, low ESR and they're the right values those things are going to pop with much more juice than what this cap over here was doing and that capacitor you know which is uh, it's probably not a very good choice um, is what was doing the work there so I thought that was pretty cool the driver itself is low-key genius I mean I'm surprised it works um, you really don't see a whole lot of circuits out there um, doing them like that but as you can see this is the most simplistic form that you can get of it um, and it, it seems to work out pretty good to me I have not experimented on any more gate drive transformers other than that but you know it's hard to say that it could make a huge difference 
Um, wish I could see what the waveform looks like, but seems to be doing pretty good.